Welcome ladies and gentlemen. This is George Committee. Today we are going to uh, draw a shear force and a bending moment diagram for a simply supported beam loaded with two point rods and one uniformly distributed load. Don't forget to hit the subscription button as well as the notification bell. So our first thing will be to determine the value of the reactions at support A as well as at support B. So we are going to begin with the reaction calculations. And for us to get the value of the reactions, we are going to take moments about point A from end B. Remember, the value of clockwise moments clockwise moments must be equal to anti-clockwise moments. Therefore, the sum of clockwise moments must be equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moments. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, that is the idea we are going to use in determination of reactions at point A as well as at point B. Therefore, taking moments about A, we are going to have reaction at B times the distance from point B to point A, which in this case is 6 meters. That is an anti-clockwise moment, which will be equal to the following clockwise moments. One of the clockwise moments is the load of 1 kN times the distance from C to A, which in this case will be 1 kN times 1 meter. Plus, between point E and point D, we have a uniformly distributed load and therefore we are going to uh, convert it to a point load by multiplying its value by the span in which it is distributed, that is from E to D, which is 2 meters. Then we multiply by the distance from the center of this point, from the center of this section E to D, which is uh, one, uh, 2 meters divided by 2, all the way to A. Therefore, this is going to be 2 divided by 2. That is the span between E and D. Then you add 2 meters, the distance from point D to point A. Then, finally, we are going to add another, anti -clock, uh, another clockwise moment of 4 kN times a distance of 5 meters from F all the way to A. Therefore, that is going to give us 4 times 5. Therefore, RB times 6 is going to give us 1 plus, this is going to be 2 divided by 2, that is 1, plus 2, that is 3, 3 times 4 will give us um, 12 kilonewtons. Then we add 4 times 5, which in this case will be 20 kilonewtons. Then we are going to have Rb times 6, which will be equal to 33 kilonewtons. Therefore, to get the value of Rb, we are going to divide both sides by 6. And therefore, the reaction at B is going to be by 6, 1, by 6, 1 by 6, 1, by 6, 5.5. Therefore, the reaction at B will be equal to 5.5 kilonewtons. So, right there, 5.5 kilonewtons. Then from there, we determine the value of reaction at A, and we are going to say that reaction at A plus reaction at B is equals to the sum of downward acting forces, which in this case we have 1 kN at point C. Then we have UDL between E and D, convert it to point rod, take the value of the UDL, multiply by the span in which it is distributed, plus another point rod of 4 kN at point F, which in this case is 4. Therefore, reaction at A plus reaction at B, which is 5.5 kN, is going to give you 9 kN. Therefore, RA is going to be 9 minus 
5.5, which in this case is going to give you 3.5 kilo newtons. Therefore, the reaction at A is 3.5 kilo newtons. So ladies and gentlemen, that is how we calculate the value of the reactions acting at point A as well as at point B. After getting the value of the reactions at uh, point A as well as at point B, the next operation will be to determine the value of shear forces at each and every section on our beam. Remember, shear force is the sum of all the uh, forces acting on one or either side of a given section. So in this case, we are going to have shear force calculations. In other words, in short form, SF calculations. Now, we are going to begin with shear force between point F, between point B and point F, which in this case is going to be 5.5 kilonewtons. The reason being, when you consider any point between point B and F, check on the right hand side of that uh, point, you will find that we only have one rod of 5.5 kilonewtons. Then from there we go to shear force between point F and point E, which is going to be this rod of 5.5 kilonewtons between B and F minus 4 kilonewton, the point rod acting at point F. And this is going to give us 1.5 kilonewtons. 1.5 kilonewtons. Then from there, between point E and point D, we have a uniformly distributed load. And therefore, we are going to say that from E to D, shear force changes uniformly so we are going to have a uniform change of shear force from positive 1.5 kilonewtons. Why positive 1.5 kilonewtons? Because between E and F, when you look on the right hand side of that uh, point, we have a total of shear force of 1.5 kilonewtons, which we have calculated as this 5.5 minus this 4. Then, between point E and point D, we have a uniformly distributed rod, which we can convert to point rod by multiplying its value with this pan, which is, which is going to give us 4 kilonewtons that will act at the center of point E and D. Therefore, here we have a point rod of 4 kilonewtons. Therefore, from E to D, since we have a uniformly distributed rod, shear force will change uniformly from positive 1.5 kilonewtons to mm -hmm. so we are going to take this 1.5 kilonewtons we subtract the 4 kilonewtons that is acting at the center of E and D therefore that will be 1.5 minus 4 kilonewtons which will give us negative 2.5 kilonewtons therefore from E to D shear force will change uniformly from positive 1.5 kilonewtons to negative 2.5 kilonewtons. Then from there, we go to shear force between point D and point C. So shear force between D and C, that is going to be this negative 2.5, since we don't have any other load between point D and point C. When you consider this point here, check on the right hand side of that point, you will find that the sum of all these forces will be negative 2.5 kilo newtons. Finally, we determine the shear force between point C and point D, which is going to be negative 2.5 kilo newtons minus the 1 kilo newton point rod loaded at point C. That is going to give us negative 3.5 kilo newtons. So, those are the value of the shear forces acting on all the sections 
on our simply supported beam. Then after that, after determining the value of the reaction uh, of the shear forces, we are going to use these shear force calculations to plot a shear force diagram. Now, for us to plot a, a shear force diagram, we are going to draw the horizontal line. And remember, this horizontal line is the line that separates positive shear forces drawn above this line and negative shear forces drawn below this line. So beginning on the right hand side, we have the shear force between B and F, which is 5.5 kN. We are going to draw it above this line. So if we, call, if we approximate 5.5 to be at that point, between B and F, we are going to have a shear force diagram that looks like that. Therefore, here we have 5.5 kN. Then from there, we have the shear force between, S and, uh, between F and E, which is 1.5 kN. So uh, at point F, approximate 1.5 kN to be at that point. At point E, the same. Then join those two points together. And then join this point to the point 1.5 kN in that uh, form. Then we are going to have 1.5 kN at that point. Then from there we have... Uh, from E to D, we have a uniform change of shear force from positive 1.5 kN, which is this, to negative 2.5 kN at D, which we are going to have it, uh, uh, this is the origin, 2.5 uh, units approximately at that point. So, the uniform change for us to, uh, to show clearly that a uniformity, a change of 1.5 to 2.5, we are going to join these two points together with a smooth straight slope in that uh, form. So this is going to give us 2.5 kN. Then we have the shear force between point D to point C, which is negative 2.5 kN. So since this is a 2.5 kN point, we are just going to join uh, another 2.5 kN at point C. Then finally we have the shear force between uh, S and D, which is negative 3.5. So since this is 2.5, we are going to drop one point uh, or one unit down. Again at point uh, A, we have negative 3.5 units down. So we join uh, those points and then finally we complete our SFD diagram by dropping that line from this point of origin all the way to the 3.5 kN. Therefore, that is 3.5 kN as well as at point A, 3.5 kN. Then, uh, the SFD below this line of origin is negative, so we light a negative side inside that diagram. And then the SFD above this line of origin is positive, therefore we light a positive sign inside that diagram. And then we shade our lines off to show the outline of our shear force diagram. So ladies and gentlemen, that is how we usually uh, calculate the shear forces and use those shear force calculations to plot or to draw a shear force diagram. Then finally, below our shear force diagram, we are going to light SFD to denote shear force diagram. Thank you for watching our video. Our next lesson, we are going to answer the next question of clearly marking the position of the maximum bending moment as well as plotting a BM diagram. If you have liked our video, please don't forget to subscribe and to hit the notification bell so that you'll be the first person to be notified every time we upload a new video. Thank you very much for watching and liking our video.